the shop has always been um, a community thing. It's a ship and I'm her captain. I started working at the shop when I was about uh, 16 or 17. She gave it to her sons um, and um, they, and she gave it to her sons but asked me to manage it. They ran it fairly into the ground um, to the point that I took a leave of absence um, and came in just to do paperwork and kind of keep things going. And one day I came in and it was clear that they had not been in for a week or two. Um, while I had been gone and there was no money in the till, showcases were um, disheveled, uh, there was a notice of eviction, all kinds of stuff. And so I called their mom and said, hey, this is what's going on. I'm gonna get the shop up and running today and we can figure things out. And uh, ultimately it came to light that the sons really didn't wanna run a uh, shop. And uh, so I bought it for $1 and all the back debt, which was considerable. And uh, I took a loan out against my college fund and bought the shop. Everyone thought I was it was a mistake. Everyone thought it was crazy. Um, I had, I, up to that point, I had spent my entire life up into that ripe old age of 18, um, working towards uh, getting a degree in education and teaching. Um, and this came up and I was like, oh, I can just run a shop for a couple of years and then this will help me pay for college and then I'll go and teach. And um, that's not really how it played out. So I graduated from college in 95 when I was 20. And then I um, got into the University of Antioch to get my master's degree. Um, and in the first or second year of my master's degree, uh, things in my life kind of imploded. My dad was very sick. Uh, my first marriage was um, dissolving, I guess is a good word. The business wasn't doing particularly well. And I was also teaching at this point. I was a paraeducator. Um, and so I had to pick uh, which of my, li my loves I was going to give up. Uh, clearly, I wasn't going to give up on my dad. So it kind of came down to... Um, teaching or the shop. And I chose the shop because I figured I can always go back to teaching. So we started in South Sound Mall, um, which is where Target is now. And then we moved, <laughs> ironically enough, uh, we moved behind it uh, on the same strip mall as PetSmart. Uh, and there's a gun store now where I used to be. And then we moved across the street. There's a two-story building. Um, right next to the car dealership and Wells Fargo. And we were there for about six years. And then my goal had always been to own the building, buy the land, own the building. So we bought the land um, that we are currently on and our first contractor quit. Um, our first contractor uh, said they could get it done on a timeline. They went away for a month when they came back. I was not happy and so they quit. And uh, so I got my contracting license and just built it. I just did it myself. I didn't like lay every piece of everything here. I hired people to do it the way a general contractor would. Um, but there is not, I don't believe that there is any portion of this shop that I didn't have my hands or my feet or something in. Um, I helped lay the foundation. I helped uh, insulate the roof. I put these red beams up like I was up there with spud wrenches with my legs wrapped around all this stuff putting them up I the braces you see I did that and the community really stepped up too like they would come in and be like Gabby looks like she hasn't slept for three days is there anything we can do and like they'd come in and shovel dirt or they'd come in and like straighten and sweep or you know my parents came in and they did all the gardening um, my father helped um, level the backyard and uh you know there's it, it the shop really was built by this community and the community moved the whole store over and then built it up and city of lacey was a fantastic um partner and advocate for building the store i tried to only hire custom customers um or families of customers um i tried to hire local people 
And there's just, there's a lot of this community. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears in the shop. You'll see like where the kids have grown up. You'll see their ticks on the wall. You'll see, you know, you'll see people where they signed on the beams that helped me put the beams up. There's, there's signatures, places you can't see them because like they helped put that stuff up. They signed it and now it's in the wall. Like it's a part, it's a part of this store. I'm one of her oldest customers now. Um, I, I met her right after she um, got the shop. So my file number is number seven. So, and now she has thousands upon thousands of them. She's the nicest person, always a um, warm smile, hello, hug, no matter who, who comes in. Um, that hasn't changed over all these years. She's just a great person and people can feel that. People, um, it's like, you're not just a customer, you're just part of this big family. And um, that's what keeps me coming back because she just, even though I live in Tacoma, you know, there's plenty of shops along the way. This is my, this is my store and this, I always keep coming back. She's a sister, she's a little sister, a big sister, a second cousin, a fairy godmother. She means a lot to these people because she, she has been through generations. I know that my kids who are adults now, they come here. Um, there's probably other customers who have kids who had kids and now that they come here. So she's seen in generations who all come here and um, it just, it's great for, great to see that all these people had that love for her and long time customers and long time commitment to her. You know, like, it's like, can, can you get big enough you know, for her? But, you know, this is just a source of pride because we, we all knew this is her place, this is her dream. And um, the whole community kind of came together to make sure it was successful. The thing about being the underdog, and when I said I was the underdog, like, I was embarrassed to tell people where I worked. That's how bad the reputation of the shop was when I just worked there, let alone when I built it. Um, so when you're the underdog, you cannot afford to be anything less than exemplary. You don't get to have a bad day at work. You don't get to be rude to anyone. Um, your customer service has to be on point every minute of every day because you have an uphill battle. Um, and since that's what I inherit, well, that's what I bought. That's what I, I basically inherited. Um, it turned around very slowly because, and this will cause people pain, this was before the internet. So everything was slower. So reputations took years to build versus, you know, Yelp or whatever. Um, so my goals were stay open for five years. If I was breaking even by five years, then I hadn't failed. Um, 10 years and we were officially a success. And that's what I had said. I have somewhere in here, um, it's by my desk over here, is a letter that my dad wrote me um, when I called and told him I was quitting. I was like, I can't do this anymore, dad. I just wanna teach. I don't wanna have to keep asking you for money. I feel like a failure. I don't wanna feel like a failure every day. Um, because when I first bought the shop, I was running the shop, I was going to school, and I was on a soccer scholarship. So I was playing athletics. And so I just, for two years, it was just nothing but work, school, work, school, work, school, athletics. And uh, I still wasn't being very successful. And so um, my dad just wrote me this letter that was basically like, look, you're doing great. And if you don't want to do that, I'll support whatever. But you're doing great. Keep working hard. Um, and that meant a lot to me. Um, he passed a couple years ago, um, right before COVID, actually. Um, but uh, no, he is, even now, um, an amazing influence on the person I am. Um, he, uh, he was a very consistent man. He was very, um, he just kind of taught me how to be in the world. Um, one of the things he told me early on was that um, you could lose everything, you could have everything taken from you um, except your integrity and your education. Those are the two things that you're the only one who can give up. And I took that to heart. And uh, he basically was like, if you give your word to something, you follow through. He was very old school in those like old school, like family is everything, you give your word, it means something. Like he was very old fashioned in those things. And he used to say, you know, my honor, what, did he, what was it he used to say? 
like, I guess my honor comes at a price, but it's not this or something like this. My honor is worth more than this $2.50 or whatever it is. He used to say it was something along those lines. Um, but uh, so, yeah, so he taught me a lot just by living in the world and talk, walking his walk. And that's something that I, I definitely, I definitely try and do. You won't rest on your laurels. You will continue to be a positive force in your community. And then you will also be an excellent role model for both young men and young women for the rest of your life. In that same time period, uh, a couple kids, a brother and a sister who came in with this balloon that said you're one in a million and this little bucket of like Hershey Kisses. And uh, they came in and they were like, you just want to know that um, we love you and you make a difference. And I was just like, ah, blah. And so like that really, I mean, that one thing really had an input, impact on me. Like someone telling me you make a difference, the shop makes a difference. Um, it's hard to walk away from that. It's hard to be like, oh, pff, yeah, but whatever. I'm going to go do this other thing because this is hard. Um, so those kids, I'm sure... I'm sure it's something that they did that they didn't realize was as big a deal as it was. I had a customer early on who would come in every Wednesday, which is when we'd get our shipments, back in the days of cash on demand, when you could hand the UPS guy cash. Um, and he would come in and ask what my bill was that week. And then he would, do, oh, I, uh, magically all of a sudden he needed three boxes of magic cards. You know, like, oh, no, I just, I need these. Like, it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that it is exactly how much you need to get your COD. You know, um, I had a customer who overheard me talking about um, not being able to pay something significant. And uh, he happened to get a bonus from Boeing, and he just wanted to put money on account because he wasn't good at saving so he just like, here's $2,000, just put it on account for me. I'll spend it over the next few months. Okay. So you just happened to hear me and now you happen to have $2,000. So, I mean, there was a lot of stuff like that where people would do whatever they needed to do to ensure that the store kept going. I grew up on the big island of Hawaii. Um, and when I first moved up here, because I was moving in with my brother, um, when I first moved up here, I was looking for a new hobby shop because I grew up and we had a small little card shop and he told me about this place and he's like, yeah, it's great. It's huge and they got a huge selection of board games and card games and comics. So we came up here one time and I fell in love pretty much immediately. Growing up on an island, there's a huge sense of community all the time and there was a, definitely a culture shock in Washington when I moved here. People are different than what I grew up with, um, but it reminded me of home when I first came in here. Uh, it had that same island feel, and that's, it, it made me feel uh, less homesick when I came in here. Our reputation is solely based on our customer service and our community. Like, we don't always have the best prices. I don't even, you know, I don't try and compete with online or things like that because I'm not Amazon. I'm never going to be Amazon. I'm going to treat you well when you come in, I'm gonna treat your kids well, and I'm gonna hire a staff that also feels that way. Everybody who comes in and finds their spot here, they're like, wow, I would love to do this for a living. Like, I would love to come in here and get paid to just have fun. And I moved up here during COVID when everyone was locked down, and I had lost employment, because a lot of people did, and I was like, you know what, Like, let's just take a chance. Like, I would love to work at a place like that, so I might as well. And sure enough, she had remembered me from all those years of shopping here. And I was lucky enough to really just be like, I love your novelties. I like organizing. I want to have an excuse to read more and just share stories with people. And that's the important part of this job. I never got into this to have just a retail store. Like I didn't give up my career to just sell things. And so for, 18 months, not being able to hug people, not being able to have people hang out in here. It just, it was so quiet for so long. Um, it was the first time in a very long time that I didn't think we were gonna make it. Um, because I was like, that this isn't, <laughs> this isn't what I signed up for. This isn't, this isn't what I want. 
being able to start opening up, being able to juggle the needs of the community's mental health and the needs of the community's physical health has been very challenging um, because I miss all of those kids while they were gone. We wrote letters to them. We sent them coloring pages. They would send them back. Like we did everything we could to keep our community. I did Zoom classes where like I read stories and like we tried to do everything we could to stay connected with all the kids. So Robert Quaite runs Thurston County Food Bank. Kelly Wilson runs All Kids Win, which originally was called Homeless Backpacks. So um, Robert Coit had asked if we could be a location to give out um, food bags. And we, of course, said, sure, yeah, we have room. And then I was like, hey, wait, we have a cafe now. We could do hot meals and then they could take the stuff. So they could come in and they could sit and they could have a meal. Um, and we chose to do the meals like family style. So like we'd bring, uh, uh, what you call it like oatmeal and fresh fruit and yogurt and stuff like that and then the family would sit and the parents would like serve their kids and get all the stuff and sit down and have this meal in the morning um, and then they'd leave with you know food um, and that's kind of where Gabby's kids started we started working with Kelly Wilson at homeless backpacks and um, then this thing happened where our community where I like would put a post and say, hey, if anyone needs this stuff, let me know. We have this for you. There's no reason to be embarrassed. There's no reason to be ashamed. You're part of our community. We want to help you. We want to do it with dignity. We want your kids to feel like it's a big special event and not something to be ashamed of. And then the community started saying, well, here's money. Here's food. I went to Costco when I bought this thing and I went and did this other thing. So, so what ended up happening was the word got out to help more people and then the community gave me more stuff and then we got more people and then the community gave me more stuff and then like uh it turned into well if you're doing this other thing school's about to start can i donate all this stuff for school supplies and so we'd be like yeah sure that sounds great and then we put a post out like hey we have school supplies and then everybody would be like here have school supplies so that you can help everyone and then there'd be more and so it just became this like giant thing where people would just donate all of this stuff and then people started donating money and when it was like five ten bucks it was pretty easy to manage but at the point that someone handed me a thousand dollar check i was like okay we need to have a charity we have to do something so that I can be transparent with this money and I can show people where this money is going and we can be held accountable and you know all of this stuff and it just it just grew and grew and grew and grew um, and um, we built a little a tiny house in the back and call it an outreach center and um, like the community helped me pay for that and then now we have a storage container so we can store stuff so we can actually take donations in um, year-round and um, so it just, it just became this thing that the community saw a need for. And so they, they, there was both a need and this want to help. In Hawaiian, laulima means many hands. And so, um, you know, many hands make light work. That's what, what happens. Um, and so it just, it just became this thing. And um, even now we have... You know, we have volunteers that come in and they make food bags and we have, uh, we call them our care packages for our travelers. That's what we call um, our underhoused folks that are out in the community that just come up to the door. We have a little area right here by the door and they come in and they get bags of food or socks or hand warmers or tents or all kinds of stuff that they need um, because people donate stuff and People donate money and trust me to use it for whatever the need is in the community the most. I think one of the things that I like most about Gabby's kids um, is that there is a phenomenal amount of need in our community. It is, it, it can be heartbreaking to see how much need is there. Um, but because the community has come together and built this thing, because the community trusts me to do what's best um and trust me to make those decisions um 
we can also be a tertiary resource, I guess, uh, for like Safe Place and Family Support Center and Interfaith and, you know, Stonewall Youth and all this other stuff where we have these marginalized people that need stuff in a moment. You know, we also, we make backpacks for foster kids. So if they get removed from an emergent situation, they have a backpack with stuff for themselves and their stuff isn't in garbage bags. Um, so because there's so much oversight by me, we can make emergency things happen. Um, and sometimes at any number of our shelters, they say, we need this and we don't have time for bureaucracy. In so much as the community has built the store, this is their home, this is their store. You know, they, they, there's a lot of ownership. If you talk to people in this community, there's a lot of ownership about the store. You know, kids that are ostracized, kids that are um, made fun of at school are celebrated here. And that's so important to me. Um, I don't always say it because sometimes it could hurt someone's feelings, but like, um, I, I, I have jokingly been known to say like, they may be freaks and geeks, but they're my freaks and geeks. But without the staff, without the family that we have created here, it would be nothing. They are what bring the energy in. They are what bring the, a lot of the light in. And a lot of them just make my life easier. Allison does a lot of my work. You know, Allison, Paul, Sam, Jordan, they take so much off of my plate. So what I can do when I'm here is it doesn't look like I'm ever working. Like, I'm just always talking to people. I'm just always hanging out. Like, I'm never working because they're doing all the work. They're doing all the behind the scenes stuff so that I can do that. I can do the part of this job that I love, that I care about, which is the people. I don't think ever in my career have I seen the kind of outpouring of love and just absolute sense of this is where I belong. This is what I was meant to do. I am doing what I was put on this earth for. And, uh, and people reiterating that and making me feel that. By word and deed, like, life is made up of moments. And for a lot of these kids, I get a lot of their moments. Like I don't, I don't teach them, so I don't have, you know, I don't teach them. I, I'm not their actual parent. Uh, so I have to be really, really cognizant of the things that I say and the things that I do, because in the same way I was watching my dad, they're watching me and how I treat each other and how I care about people and what we're doing here. I really do feel like at this point in my career, I have a responsibility to show and, and be the role model that a lot of these, these kids have seen. Because a lot of, we're, we're at like second generations now, second and third generations of people who have grown up here, their parents have grown up here, they are now bringing their kids in. And that to me is a big, is a big thing and there's a lot of people when we talk about family there's a lot of people in here that are my family and I take every bit of responsibility when their kids come to me or something happens I needed them and they needed me and and we just kind of did the thing all together um, it's always weird when when I get singled out for things because I'm like I didn't do this this is all of us we all did this like I just I just captain the ship <laughs>